Well, it has certainly been a minute or so since I have done a video dedicated to Life by You, as a lot of things have been happening in both my personal life and in the life simulation gaming landscape. For example, Paralives released their first gameplay video and I decided to cover that. However, today I am taking the conversation back to Life by You based on the last video that they dropped because Rocio covers a major gameplay feature from this upcoming series, and that is the Event Editor tool. Now, for those of you just discovering my channel, my name is Michael, and I want to welcome you to Sovereign Gaming in Life Sims, the YouTube channel where I build worlds, lots, and share my thoughts on video games in the life simulation gaming space. And Ever since, like, the inception of house parties, way back in The Sims 1's house party expansion pack, events and gatherings has always been, in my opinion at least, an unsung gameplay feature that I feel just doesn't get enough attention. Sure, it was expanded a bit in The Sims 4 and in its subsequent, uh, expansion packs and i guess also like the sims 2 and the sims 3 as well if i'm going to be fair here but like many gameplay features in the sims 4's franchise typically the concept or the idea is better than the actual execution itself but i'm kind of getting off topic here so today i really want to take the time to analyze what rocio had to say and to share some of my observations as well since i am looking for the next evolution of gameplay mechanics as it relates to events in a life simulation game. So we'll watch the video for a bit and then I'll pause to share some of my thoughts and opinions like I have done many times in previous videos before. So let's get started. Hi everyone, it's Rocio and I'm here to talk to you about event editing in Life by You. So we've already spoken to you about quest editing and that is a portion of this, but we're going to look at the overall event structure around those quests. And we will go over events in more detail with Hannah, our game designer on events, in the actual in-game events and the types of events you might see in Life by You. But in case you want to make your own events, this is what this video is for. First, let's go ahead and go to the events. I'm going to show you a quick example as that's always a good way to see what they look like. So let's go ahead and start with a birthday party. This is one that Hannah was going to show off, so you can see it, a little preview for that. Here you can see the display name is event. Here you can see, here you can see the display name for the birthday party. Um, you can also mark it as a work event, and Hannah will go over work at a future point in time as well. Um, you can see that there's a time limit in minutes for an event. You can have an event be schedulable by the individual person. So for example, you can schedule a birthday party, you can schedule a date, you can schedule stuff like that, but you won't necessarily be able to schedule your work. That comes with its own schedule. And here you can see under the condition is this person has to have any relationships with the human, in this case, who has a birthday within 10 days. So you can be friends with them, you can be in a relationship with them, and that person can schedule that event and be the host for that event. Here you can see there is minimum, maximum of one host, minimum, maximum of one person, birthday person. And if you go under conditions, you can see again, birthday check, it will check to see when that person's birthday is because you can't have a birthday party five months ahead of their birthday. And then you have guests. So for this one in particular, you can see you can have no guests, you can have up to 15 guests for this party. And the condition here is they need to be acquainted, friends, siblings, parents, or housemates. That's basically the roles. Um, one thing that we can look at here as well is under host, you can see that the host has their own quest. So here for the birthday party host, you will have a time limit for the event. They are the ones who know when they have to schedule and how soon they have to schedule it. And it will quit that event once they, once the time expires. So let's go ahead and go to edit this thing. And here you can see, you can override the journal text if you want it to say something particular. Here you can adjust the host name if you want it to say something else other than host. And you can see here for the host on event schedule, they now have the quest to prepare the birthday party. And similarly for the birthday person, they also have their own name, their own quest. And we'll go over what a birthday party looks like in more detail later. And here you can also select the lot selection. So this can be a selected human, it can be public lots, it can be any lots. In this case, you want it to be the participant's home because they're hosting the party. And it will show in your calendar here. 
which is important to know so you don't miss the event. If you miss the event, then you're missing a party that you're hosting in this case, or that it's your birthday party. So that's the structure of an event, as you can see on this side of it. One thing that I want to go through, let's go ahead and look at what these quests look like on the other side. So for example, let's go to a birthday party person. As the birthday party person, there are a couple of things you have to do on your birthday party. You have to attend the party, you have to blow out your candles, and you have to eat cake. These require some kind of interaction, and this one requires you to actually arrive at the lot you need. Here you can see all the steps are optional, so you can go ahead and if you don't want to do something, don't do it. You don't want cake, don't eat cake. Um, this is also a timed quest. If you don't finish in time, the quest will not succeed and you will not get your reward. Um, in this case, you get experience. In the case of the host, you have a lot more to do. You have to actually attend the birthday party, give birthday wishes. You have to give a gift. You have to light the candles. You have to start the birthday song. You have to eat cake. There's a whole lot you have to do as the birthday host. Let's go ahead and make ourselves an event because I think that's the easiest way to show you how this all works. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to game events. We're going to create one and I'm going to title it. I personally, I know we just added this feature in, so we're going to test it out. I want to take pictures. So let's go ahead and make this a hike. Let's say go on a hike. That's the event, and then the display name is going to be typed better. Let's give it a solid amount of time because you never know how long that hike can be. Some hikes can be really long, some hikes can not be long. Let's make the condition... Let's add a condition for the traits. So, has trait... Let's see, we're going to make this person, I don't think someone, I think we need somebody who likes the outdoors. So let's go ahead and say they're athletic. If they're athletic, you need to have that trait in order to schedule it. From here, you can go ahead and add a new role, which I'm going to go ahead and say hike, hike host. And then we're going to have hike guest. All right, so each one of these will require a quest. And for this person, let's say we need at least one. For guests, we can have up to four, but they can go alone. They don't need everybody. Um, let's not invite elders, but let's invite teens. We don't want the elders to get sore knees. So there's a lot to unpack here when it comes to Rocio explaining what hosting a birthday party means and how I'm going to simplify my understanding of it, to be honest. But let's back up to the beginning here. So in the first bit of the clip, Rocio kept mentioning that the team will go over events in more detail, including work events. Not sure if that means that there's another video or even a blog that's in the works, but I'd be very interested to see what more they can show in terms of events. So. Um, so yeah, kind of an interesting little tidbit that Rocio was sharing is that they have a lot more to speak on it. So yeah, I'm all ears for when they are ready to share that when the time comes. But before I discuss the structure of the events, I also just wanted to show that there have been some changes to the editor menu, or what I know to be as the editor menu. Personally, like I'm not keen on adding my ins, uh, my insights and speculations uh, to those changes as it kind of feels like a moving target at this point. And I think that my speculations would actually be more distracting than anything. However, like I do think that it is important to note that there are changes to the editor tools and uh, to this menu, I suppose, um, from like some of the other times that we have grown to see it. And who knows, this could be like a completely separate menu, um, which is again why I'm choosing not to spend too much time analyzing it. I just kind of wanted to share with you guys that I noticed some changes. I will likely throw up a screenshot that just kind of highlights some of the changes that I've noticed and I just want to kind of keep it moving and just to let you know that, hey, I see it too. 
Back to the meat and potatoes of this clip that I have decided to cut from the event editor tool video. Essentially, like when it comes to creating events, I kind of feel like it functions more or less like a group quest where life by you human characters get assigned different quests based on their role in the actual event. Like I do think that this is actually pretty cool because in life by you, you can control literally anyone in the game, including NPCs or townies so hypothetically if there is a birthday person celebrating their birthday that's stuck or distracted or what have you as the player you could take control of the birthday person and get them to complete their tasks so that the party can move forward and so that everybody can complete the event successfully but that's just me kind of hypothetically speaking here i actually love that the events seem like they function um, sort of similarly as what they did in The Sims 2, being that they function more like a mini game. In The Sims 2, uh, essentially you just had to like try to bump up your party score within a time frame. There really wasn't much to it outside of that, but it kind of helps to change the player's um, mindset and it helps to break up the pace in a way that I felt that was really done well in The Sims 2 that was um, that wasn't continued in The Sims 3 or The Sims 4. So one of those things that The Sims 2 does that I feel is superior to its uh, to its predecessors and its successors. I, I like I mentioned, I honestly think that these kind of mini games help to break up the pace of a player's experience in a very good way. So I'm kind of I'm very happy to see that events are treated in that similar manner. And the biggest difference that I see here between Life by Use events and The Sims 2 parties is that the parties in The Sims 2 never really had a list of tasks for Sims to do, whereas the Life by You events clearly has roles for guests and hosts, along with tasks that each person needs to play. Um, yeah, I do think that this is honestly like a step in the right direction, but the only hang up that I could potentially see here is that it could feel repetitive for those events. Um, like for example, if uh, you're hosting the same kind of party, it just might feel the same if you're continuously doing that, such as, you know, doing birthday parties. But the great thing about Life by You in that same breath is that you can create different parties and events, such as like creating your own custom birthday party at a pool, for example, like with having different tasks assigned to guests, hosts, and birthday people alike. Of course, like this is just me speculating based on what we know about Life by You, but again, like I feel like this is truly an evolution for the next generation of life simulation games that really goes above and beyond what players were expecting when it comes to hosting events and parties. Now, as opposed to watching the rest of the video and reflecting on it during certain times that I've paused, I'm actually just going to play the rest of it in the background as I talk because for the rest of the video, there was really nothing that I wanted to pause and reflect on since I felt like it was pretty self-explanatory. Moving on, I did, however, like want to point out that there is an event called the Death Day, which is interesting that it is an event. I can't help but wonder like if we delete that event are the life by you human characters immortal then <laughs> or like what quests um within the death day event actually are that's just my own natural curiosity just kind of popping up here but other than that like just from watching the rest of the video i do have to wonder if there will be a technical hard limit to the amount of events or quests that you can have in your life by you game like how much space are these events going to take up in your game way that I understand it is that events in Life by You are essentially a collection of quests. And to me, it seems like in order to create an event, you have to create a couple of quests. And I guess my cat is making an unexpected appearance here. So if he's on camera, his name is Luce and he loves this kind of stuff. He loves to hang out and stuff. But anyways, let's just kind of get back to the video here. Hopefully I don't laugh too much through it. So yeah, um, just the way that I understand it, like events are in Life by You are essentially like a collection of quests that are assigned to people in different roles. And like theoretically, you know, in my opinion, this could take up a lot of space in your computer. Again, I kind of feel a little, um, I, I don't exactly feel confident speaking about like how much space is gonna take up in your computer just because I honestly don't know the technical limits. I'm just kind of bringing it up into question like how 
how big, like how big are these editor tools and, and all that. Again, all of the technical uh, requirements, all the computer requirements were listed on their website a little while back. So if that's still there, I'm just gonna crop up a quick screenshot just to kind of show you guys where it is. And of course I'll drop the description in, or sorry, the link in the description box too. But yeah, um, in a good way, I can see Life by You players really designing complicated quests and events with like multiple steps and such. But whether or not players will have the space in their game and their computer remains to be seen. And I do hope that the Life by You team has taken this into consideration. All this feels very much like the opportunity systems from The Sims 3, but only like a lot more widespread and a lot more participants within that. So. Um, so yeah, I'm very interested to just kind of see how it evolves and I feel like it's another game mechanic that is offering an endless amount of customization and, um, and playability here and modability really. So I'm very impressed with the way that it has been explained because I can just see the potential here. I'm also like not sure if this is possible, but I think that it would be nice to set up time parameters for quests, such as making quests only completable during certain hours of the day. I could have missed this, or so feel free to comment below if I happen to just be missing of this aspect of the quest or event creation, or if I'm just forgetting something here. I'm not perfect, you guys. So like, just to kind of uh, expand on what I was just saying there, for example, like when Rocio was creating her hiking event, I think that it would be more realistic uh, to only make the hiking event available during the day as people are more likely to hike during the daytime. Sure, you can set the event time when you're actually in the game and as the host, but I'm just wondering if it's possible to only make events available during certain times of the day by default or through the gaming options there. Again, I feel like I could have just been missing it or maybe I've forgotten about it. So if I'm completely wrong on questioning this, feel free to sound off in the comments section below. I really don't mind you guys. I also want to like, and you know, just kind of in that same, uh, in that same tangent, I also think that like human XP needs to be explained more thoroughly. This is again, one of those things where I feel like I'm either forgetting something or I've just missed it, but you know, this human xp could have just went way over my head from all of the previous videos and maybe again i just missed it so sound off in that comment section but i don't think that it has ever been crystal clear on what human xp actually is um and to me like there really seems to be a difference between human xp and skill xp as outlined in this video here and outlined in the quest video as well and i really think that it kind of warrants clarification at this point since it has been mentioned several times that you could gain human xp as a reward but what is that actually what is that reward actually doing for the players or for their life by you human characters that's kind of what I'm questioning here. Again, like if I've missed that one, just feel free to sound off in the comments. I don't mind. Maybe I'll do a whole video based on uh, getting corrected by uh, the folks that are correcting me here. So who knows? I don't mind being wrong. I don't take, I, I don't put too much thought to it. But yeah, easily this video and the quest making video really go hand in hand to give a deeper understanding to event creation and to understanding quests as well, to be fair. Like I've mentioned many times, like when fundamentally breaking down how events function in Life by You, to me, it feels like a collection of quests assigned to roles of those attending that event. I also think that it is worth mentioning again and worth reminding ourselves um, about some of the basics when it comes to traits in a life by you context. And really that context is that traits in life by you are not just personality traits, rather they are more like technical tags within the game that game features will actually recognize. And they do, and these like uh, life by you traits really range in a variety of functions. And I have covered this in a previous video when really unpacking what the life by you team means by traits. So feel free to check out that video. Um, whenever they mention traits, they are referring to more than just personality traits. And I feel like that is super, super, super important to remember um, when discussing life by you. So yeah, feel free to check out that video if you'd like. It is there for you. I break it down in all that jazz. But yeah, if there is another thing that I really think is demonstrated here, it's that Life by You desperately does need an action queuing system of some kind. And that's something that I've been saying in a couple of videos of mine. It was pointed out by 
uh, one of my commenters here and I absolutely agree and it's something that I really feel could go a long way here. So you know just looking at this video, well just looking at this video and looking at some of the other gameplay videos, there's a lot of micromanaging having to jump from one life by you human to another and we even saw Rocio almost lose Clea because she wanted to cry in the bushes before going on a hike. Now I don't mind the autonomy at all but Rocio had to like jump between playing Clea and Dawn and I just simply feel that an action queuing system of some kind could have gone a long way here. We have seen other playthroughs uh, where there is a lot of jumping between human characters, so it's not like this is an isolated circumstance in my opinion, and I just think that um, this gameplay feature of having that que uh, queuing system is desperately needed and something that would be a huge quality of life change for players that will all enjoy. However, I will also say that it is super nice to see an event created in the editor tool and then to see it actually experienced in the game. I have been asking for this kind of experience for some time now, so it's really nice to see how smoothly the editor tool actually uh, was actually translated an event into an in-game experience. So I hope to see more of this uh, myself going forward, but that's just me and I just really appreciate it that they show, uh, that they shown something that was created in the editor and put it in game. I think that it is also very important to observe some of the conversations on the YouTube video itself, since the comment sections on any video, quite frankly, never fails to have some nuggets of gold in it, so to speak. So the first comment uh, from Maya and Hannah that I want to reflect on and kind of discuss is essentially them sharing how using the editor tools can, seems like it could be a time consuming task and the Life by You team left a pretty interesting response in my opinion. Just to paraphrase what the Life by You team uh, responded with, they essentially said that they are looking into making it easy for modders to share their creations publicly and that they'll share more on that closer to the early access date. So what's interesting about this response to me was that they are essentially reinforcing that modding will be a huge part of the gameplay experience. They do need to heed the lessons of the City Skylines 2 launch since Paradox purported for that game that modding would be easy and they've really struggled on delivering on that vision. But I just wanted to add that in here that it seems like players will be given a wider range of downloadable content to choose from when the Life by You game actually launches and I'm wondering if the modability and sharing the modability and all that will be something that we can expect come the early access uh, launch. But I guess they've covered their tracks essentially by saying that they'll share more closer to the early access date. So we'll just have to wait and see when it comes to that. But my point here with uh, comparing it to City Skylines 2 is that with uh, City Skylines 2, they promised a pretty robust, like Paradox promised a pretty robust um, modding community, easy, um, you know, easy access to like mod your video <laughs> to mod City Skylines 2 and really a platform to make that uh, experience an easy one to play through. And the delivery on it has been uh, staggered, so to speak, and I'm really trying not to be overly critical on it, but I just wanted to say here that if you're promising something, you do have to deliver on it because the um, the launching of the modding platforms for City Skylines 2 is something that is uh, starting to really become a problem within that community, and that's just something that I wanted to share here in this video is that they need to learn the lessons from City Skylines 2 on what not to do in regards to the um, to launching a modding platform or making your games moddable. You have to have that um, ready to go pretty much from the jump or you need to promise a date and actually fulfill that promise. So, you know, just heed that lesson there is really all I'm trying to say here and don't underestimate it because as City Skylines 2 has uh, going to show us, it is a much bigger project than I think that even Paradox was anticipating at the time that they were promising it. So learn those lessons, like, but you need those lessons or change your promises. That's or yeah, change not change your promises, but heed those lessons. And if you need to change the communication uh, in regards to it before it actually launches. And I know it's tacky to kind of give advice there, but 
that's um you know as a player i feel like that is something that we can all roll with is just those kind of um those kind of adjustments but yeah back to the actual like downloads themselves like i can easily see there being like categories of events quests food troves etc like a much larger list of actual content custom content types that players can enjoy like i truly see there just being um a huge amount of custom content that players can uh, have access to and modders can explore actually creating comfortably um just by the looks of all the editor tools that we have at our fingertips so you know these categories of custom content and making the game as customizable as pretty much possible is really something that isn't being explored by other life simulator games and i continue to feel that that gives life by you the edge over its uh, future competitors and also it gives it gives life by you the appeal as well like you can theoretically customize everything um every aspect of the gameplay down to the events down to the troves and all of that and so you know that kind of gameplay experience is unique for life by you and um with this event video i really felt like it explored that and with this comment here it continues to reinforce that it the customizability and sharing that customizability is continuing to be a very big aspect of gameplay of the life by you experience i hope that made sense if that did not feel free to sound off in the comments below another interesting comment came from this user that I'm going to put on screen because they have a username that I won't attempt to try to pronounce. Um, it's always fun trying to read usernames and all that, so it's always a good one there, but this one I am going to leave up to the reader. <laughs> Anyways, this one is a bit off topic in the context of this video, which is focused on events and quests, but I feel like the reassurance here in regards to population has continue to fuel the problem space that I don't feel is being discussed enough and it's a problem space that I have pointed out on this channel on several of my videos and that is the problem space being populate or yeah being population management and their corresponding housing requirements more importantly now I don't want to get too off topic but I honestly feel like this is a good problem to have first and foremost, since it does make the case for having multi-housing uh, multi lots such as apartments. However, without giving the player the ability to construct multi uh, multiple structures on one lot, I just feel like there's a long road ahead before getting apartment lots and the like. I just wanted to mention this in today's video since the problem space of housing, not necessarily population control, but actually housing uh, your life by use neighborhood population is indeed still a problem space that hasn't been directly addressed. And yes, I understand that you can adjust your settings uh, yourself to control the population manually and that you can just slot in household into a random house, but would actually like housing the townies you do choose to have in your neighborhood be something that challenges players? That's kind of what I'm questioning here. And I don't mean to beat a dead horse as I have discussed this numerous times on my channel, but the issue to house your townies is still present. Sure, you can just throw them in the household manager tool and uh, throw them in a random house here and there. But if you stuff a house like full of all of your townies, to me, that's just not realistic gameplay. And that's not gameplay that I would ever look to have in my worlds and in my neighborhoods and all that. And like, if I am going to be completely honest, I feel like the housing problem space will likely be addressed more predominantly during the actual early access period. I don't think it's something that is going to, um, I don't think it's going to be something that goes away very soon. They even mentioned it, like you can have as many townies as you want. You can invite people to actually live in your neighborhood, but the players don't exactly have the capability to house them in a way that makes sense. And that's been my point this whole time with that. But yeah, that is all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> As you can tell, like the housing issue, the digital housing issue in Life by You, I suppose, is certainly something that I can talk a lot about. I am going to leave it here for today since I really am getting way too off topic for the events video. So let me just kind of reel it back here. At this time, I am going to give you guys the floor in the comment section. Overall, like, how are you feeling about events in life by you? 
Do you think that events function like a grouped set of quests? Or do you think that I'm really not hitting the target with that observation? Is there an event that you are looking forward uh, to making yourself? And what kind of roles and quests would you create for those events that you choose to make? Or are creating events just not your cup of tea and you're waiting for the modding community to step it up and create some events um, when the time comes? Feel free to drop your comments in the comment section below with your thoughts. I just kindly ask that you are respectful. And until next time, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, then feel free to like this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you again, and please have yourself a wonderful day.